gnosis. You know, that's why John wrote the letter of 1 John, because they, were, they felt salvation was all according to, to knowledge. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, listen, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Now, watch what it says here. It says, Christ, the power of God. Uh, the Bible says in the 18th verse of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says this, that the preaching of the cross is the power of God. Romans 1.16 says the gospel is the power of God. All of those three things are synonymous. Preaching Christ crucified, preaching the gospel, which is Jesus died for your sins and he's risen from the dead, and that's the power of God. Preaching Christ, Christ is the power of God. All of those things are synonymous. So in order to preach the gospel, we've got to preach Christ, Him, His power. We've got to preach the gospel, the good news, that what Jesus did at the cross and His death, burial, and resurrection provided everything that I am, everything I have, everything I'll ever be for now and all eternity. That, my friends, will change people's lives. So the real source, my friends, and of strength and wisdom is the power of the cross. Now, I quoted this scripture, but I'll quote it to you again. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 14. It says, for by one offering, that's the offering of Jesus at the cross. For by one offering, he, God the Father, has perfected forever. Now, is that past tense, present tense, or future tense? Past tense. Past tense. He has perfected forever them. Now, the King James Bible says, whom he has sanctified but really, it's to them who are being sanctified. Now, now, now here's the issue. you got to get this. We've been justified, and we will continue to be justified. See, I've been saved, and I will continue to be. I'll be, continue to be saved. I'll continue to walk in salvation. So it's a done deal, but it's a present tense fact of something that I live and walk in. You got that? See, I've been justified. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. King James says, being justified. Some of the newer translations says, having been justified. Well, which is it? It's both. I've been justified, and I will continue to be justified. Amen? I've been sanctified, and I will continue to be sanctified. I've been set apart. I've been made holy. I've been accepted and declared blameless in the sight of God. And I will continue to be that. Why? Because of what Jesus did at the cross. Because of atonement. Amen? Because of reconciliation. So, what we have to do, and what we have to understand by revelation is what the cross did for us. What did it do? It perfected us. Can I say this in kindness to you, friends? Out of respect, we got to stop saying, well, I'm not perfect. Yes. you got to stop saying that. Because you are perfect. You know, we, we use that term as an excuse for behavior that, you know, has not yet lined up to what we are in the Spirit. And I understand that. There's no condemnation. But we got to stop saying that because when we say that, it programs our mind to think a certain way. Right, right. No, I have been perfected. Now, here's the problem. We're still thinking in the natural. We're still thinking, this is Joe. We're still thinking this body. We're still thinking natural. That's not who you are. Yes. I beseech you, therefore, pray. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. Did you catch that? Yeah. You and your body are not the same thing. The real you is a spirit being, perfected. Here's a revelation for you, friends. You know, you don't get anything else out this morning. Get this. If you were to pass from death to life right now, you would not change. Your spirit, man will never, ever, ever change ever again. It was perfected the day you got saved. And this is the spirit man that you're going to bring into heaven and then wherever you're going to be after Jesus comes back for all eternity. It's not going to change. It's already been perfected. You've already been perfected. You got that? And so this spirit man that is already perfected, what is it supposed to do? It's going to transform, metamorphosize, Change from the inside out this mortal body. How's it going to do that? By the renewing of our mind. Yes. 
when our natural mind starts thinking in line with our spiritual mind, or it gives precedence to our spiritual mind, 1 Corinthians 2.16, we have the mind of Christ, then the spirit man will dominate the way we think. The way we think determines what we believe. The way we believe determines the way we act. And the whole key to this whole thing, okay, what did the cross do for us? It perfected us. What's it doing in us now? It's sanctifying us. Amen? We're being transformed from the inside out. Now, how do I appropriate everything that Jesus did at the cross? I believe. Not have faith. I already have faith. I believe, which is act like it's so. Why? Because it is so. How does a healed man act? Yeah, it's healed. How does a healed man talk? He talks healed. How does a successful man talk? How does he act? He acts successful. He talks successful. Amen. See, we've got to line up what's on the inside. We've got to line up out here. It, it, I shouldn't even have to explain it. Just listen to the scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. He says, and put off the old man. Verse 24 says, and put on the new. How do you do that? Verse 23 goes right in the middle. He said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Well, wait a second. I thought the old man was dead. Why do I have to put off the old man if he's already dead? He doesn't exist anymore. No, the old man now is the way we used to think. He doesn't exist, but as long as our mind is not renewed, we can look like the old man. We can act like the old man. We can think like the old man, even though he's dead. So we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Amen? Amen. So, here's the point, friends. You can get anything you need from God. How? Simply by believing. By acting like it's so. You hear the word of God. You act upon it like it is so. Now, that would be hard except for the fact that it already is so. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not trying to twist God's arm. I'm not trying to make God do anything. I'm just acting on what God said is already so. Now, let's just take, for example, healing. For example, uh, Psalm 103. You all know this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in me. And forget not his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities? Now, I'll tell you, this is tremendous stuff. This is Old Testament, friends. This is not New Testament. He forgives all our iniquities. Now, you got to get this. What is iniquities? Huh? Sin and the consequences. Yeah, sin and the consequences of sin. It's not just sin, because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, which is a, a quote of Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, it says, His, Our sins and our iniquities, he remembers no more. He didn't say our sins or our iniquities, meaning that sins and iniquities are not the same. Amen?